Darren from uh, Jace Media and in the chair this morning we have frontman extraordinaire from Twister, Mr Stevie Stoker. How are you doing Stevie? Good, good morning mate, I'm absolutely perfect, how are you? I'm, I'm great mate, I've been looking forward to this because um, I got a notification on my timeline last Friday that, right. uh, that was the last time we saw each other. Was it really? Is it a year ago, two years ago? Or? Yeah, a year ago up at Hard Rock Cafe in Glasgow. Yeah, it was indeed. And uh, it just popped up and it said, oh, uh, anniversary of, uh, of Twister at the Hard Rock Cafe. So it's quite nice that you know you get wee, kinda, wee, wee snippets of the kind of the last time you saw kind of live music, you know. And, and, oh, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? You know. So how have you been keeping? Been really good, mate. We've um, I've tried to sort of turn the negative energy into positive energy and, and try and use that to our, our advantage. And I think I, I haven't done too badly so far, so we're getting there. I know you've been out in out in Greece again, doing your doing your bit of Greece. Is that right? Doing your, your acoustic shows and stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Me and Jake were there three weeks ago. Um, we did did three shows that week. But to be honest, the main thing is we just uh, we've been cooped up in the studio since March. Yeah. Um, and we just thought, well, look, we've re we've worked really hard on this. Let's have ourselves a little break before we have the the full album running. Um, but as it happens, uh, while I was out there, the people were going, well, look, I can, I can get you as much work as you want. So I'm going back on Sunday, and I've got five shows in a week. So That's amazing, eh? yeah, got to go where the work is, as he said. Yeah, and I th and I think it's good the fact that you know that that there's people wanting to hear your music as well, and. Absolutely. Want you to come out to, to back to Greece? Um, yeah, I know, know people go. Yeah, but you're taking a you know a risk and all that with the COVID and all that. But, but you know what? I think when you've got your craft and it's kind of what you, it's kind of what you enjoy. You know, you've got to go where the money is. You've got to go where the music is because you don't want to be stale. You know, and the, well, the, 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 the album just, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. Mister Sunak's telling us that to retrain. You know. <laughs> Yeah, we've got, we've got a couple of words for him, both of which we're not saying live on it. Absolutely, <laughs> you know. But uh, has it been strange for you and the boys? Obviously, yeah. obviously, you won your stuff uh, with HRH and stuff like that, and then got the album deal, and then COVID hit. So, were you guys? Were you just were you cook time? Were you thinking about it? Did you have to leave it? Well, we 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 basically we pretty much finished the album, other than mastering. Um, so we, we we obviously after after we did um, HRH last year we 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 sort of, we won Highway to Hell and then we we did the the big Hard Rock Hell thirteen in November which was incredible to be a part of. Uh, we we did four shows that weekend. Like <laughs> by the time I got home, my head was on back the front. It was it was amazing though. And we, when we came back from that, we'd we'd spoke to. To Johnny and and Jeff, the two, the two sort of the head on shows, if you yeah. like, and, and come up, we came up with this plan, and the plan was that we were gonna we were gonna start again, effectively, of the new year. We were gonna get rid of everything we'd done prior and release this album as a fresh start. It was this was this was our real big launch, and let's yeah. try and throw it as far as we can go. Um, so we said, well, well, how do we do that? Do we do we re-release just an album that we've done prior? I and mean, then we thought, well, we can't do that because because that's not us. We don't want to just repackage something and send it out again. So yeah. we said, well, I tell you what, let's pick our there's, there's certain corners and stuff we've cut in the past. Let's pick the best uh, what we regard as our best six songs, and let's write six more, and then let's package that as let's do it the way that we would have wanted to do it. Record it in the yeah. best studios. And the main thing we really want to have it, we really wanted to get Tony Draper involved, and we really wanted to have it mastered at Abbey Road by Frank Arkwright because Frank's been, Frank was amazing on Young and Affected, and yeah, we just wanted to keep everybody that, that this team that we built, do a full album with them. So that, that's what we did, and um, as we got the album, everything finished by mid February. So the plan yeah. was we were going to get the first single out in April on the Choir Boys tour. And then the album was going to come out in May when we were in Ibiza. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so that was our original plan, and obviously that didn't happen. And 
time started ticking on and we, we sat there with this album and then as soon as they sort of lifted the guidelines we went and we went abbey road and we got it mastered and we got it back and we went, this is just this is everything we wanted it to be so how do we how do we get it out because if we we either we either sit and ho sit and hold on to it until next year or to whenever this might be over and then one thing is we're in competition with the world who's wanting to release stuff at that point yeah or do we do we just set a date that we think's reasonable and start promotion so that's what we did and um yeah november the 13th is the date yeah it seems it seems to work quite well you obviously you've got a you've got a good lad in there peter peter noble your pr yeah. you know um I, I, have a, I have a lot of dealings with peter you know and you know when stuff comes out i'm like get me a coffee Give me a coffee, get me a coffee, give me a cup of that, you know. And I've said to him, oh, I've, worked, I've worked with the boys before, I know the lads, you know, and it's a, a good bunch of boys, you know. And I think it's nice for PR people to hear that as well because, you know, they're taking someone on and, you know, and they kind of, I think they get nice positive feedback from, you know, reviewers and media companies that you're a good bunch of lads, you know, you're a good hard working bunch of lads who just kind of want to make it out there, you know, and, and, you know, and what you've packaged, you know, your album. Cursed and corrected is a it's a it's a nice collection of stuff, you know, and it's it's a some of it's different, you know, that a lot of people kinda maybe have never heard before or not really know new wave of classic rock stuff. And you know, and I think it's quite good. Do you know what I mean? I think anyway, it's not, not a problem. So so it's a, you've got a you've got a good collection of songs that you know that you know a lot of people haven't heard before. You've got a good collection of songs that, that people can relate to. You know, and you've got a good collection of songs that's different that a lot of people haven't heard that style of music before. You know, so it's a, it's a you know it's a nice wee album. It's been well put together. You know, the, you boys have worked hard on it. You know, and and I wish I wish he's every success for it because it's a you know I haven't worked with you before in the past and listened to you and watched you on stage. You know, it's a it's probably been a long term coming. No, I appreciate that. We we have we've we've worked really hard. We've been so close on a few occasions and. It, for whatever reason that hasn't really happened but i think the one thing that we wanted to do at this stage was we wanted to create something that we were totally happy with and i think every time we've done like an album in the past or, or an ep or so released something in the past there has been corners that we've had to cut because there's not a bottomless pit of money in that and, and it's, you, you, you decide you decide where you're going to spend the money and anyway we spent all of last year just saving up and saving up so that when we when we got to the point of doing it it was like right we've now got and we did a kickstarter campaign as well to sort of to help us over the edge of that um and we ended up with with the album that we really wanted to create and that was the, that was the main thing that we wanted to achieve this time yeah have you had many uh have you had many reviews back from it yet are they, are they keep pouring in yeah we've had we've had some really good reviews um we, we just said uh, for us it's just to keep chatting them out, keep keep getting as many into as many people's faces as possible, and and get as many people to listen to it as possible. And we understand it's not it's not a it's not just a a a, 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 a balls out rock record. There's there's, there's yeah. quite a lot of different there's quite a lot of different timbres and different textures and stuff in there. And I think it can be accessible from a lot of different people and different people who are into different styles of music. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing. I think you know when you listen to it, you, you you don't immediately go, "My God, this is like blowing my socks off." But I guess that once you get into it and you you feel the different grooves and textures on it and the different rhythms and stuff like that, you know, you kind of think, "Yeah, it's quite a it's quite a catchy wee number," you know. And I think that that's a that's a good thing about it. You you, you wouldn't automatically go, "Oh, I don't like that," and putting it to the side. You know, I think it's one of those ones that grows on you because of the, the different layers that's in it, you know, and the different vocal tones and stuff like that and the beats and stuff. And I guess it just grows on you. You know, for me, it's like I've, I've listened to your stuff before and I've watched you guys perform. So for me, it was a no brainer that, you know, to, uh, you know, to listen to it, and review it for you, you know, and uh, stick it out. And this, the other side of that for me, Stevie, is, is that, you know, I put my heart on my sleeve and I tell the, the, the listeners and the viewers, this is what I think of it. You know, somebody, somebody might go, oh, I don't like your, don't like your review, or you don't know what you're talking about. But you know what? That doesn't matter because it's all about how I feel when I'm putting it towards you guys. Yeah. You guys, Absolutely. and I think when you guys listen to or you, or you read the review, you go, oh, that's pretty bang on because I don't, I don't look at it and go, 
didn't like that song, didn't like that song, didn't like that song. You know, it's I don't do that because I don't think it's fair that, you know, you guys have poured your six months into it, you know, and then sat in the studio and got different mixers and producers and engineers for somebody to go, you've got 12 songs, I didn't like six of them just because yeah. I didn't like them, you know. So it, it, you, I tend not to do that. So, um, and, and I suppose I'm biased as well because I, I like your stuff anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but I guess I just want to put down what I feel when I'm listening to you, you guys but, doing it, you know, which I think is important. It, it is, mate, and that's what we want. That's what we want from a review. We want a review to go and, and tell us what they think, and that's, that's exactly what a review is. It's what what that person thinks of that album, and yeah, we, all we wanted to, all we wanted to do was we wanted to create the best version of us, and that's what it is. It's, yeah, it, this is who we are. This <clears throat> we spoke like. A couple of years ago, me and Jake were sat and we were going, oh, you know, do we, do we change sort of roots? Do we, do we try and sound like other people? Do we try and do this sort of one? And I thought, no, we don't. We, we need to be, we need to be true to ourselves. And this is us being true to ourselves. This is the music that we want to write. This is the music that we, we want to create. Um, yeah. There's, there's the, there's the proper, the big choruses in there. Everybody can sing along to every song on the album. Yeah. Uh, all the guitar parts you can sing and that that's the that's the thing for us there's a lot of albums that i mean I, we're all big rock fans we all are listen to everybody that's played on planet rock i listen to everything that they, that they release straight away and I, most of the lads i comment on and talk to them about and stuff and some of them tracks you come out and you go fuck that that's a, that's a great song that. and some of them you come out and you go don't understand where they came from with that it's like the, the, the ingredients to the song aren't aren't enough to, to be a good song. I think a, a song's got to have so many different yeah. things about it for it to be tremendous. And I, I think a lot, a lot of people sort of really look that far in depth in it. And maybe that's, my, again, my personal opinion on it. Um, but there's, yeah, you, I think you've just, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to create something that was that was deeper than just a first listen. Yeah. Right. I kind of, I guess you, what you were just saying there right at the start was that, you know, you were sitting with the boys and saying she would change this, she would, she would look at a different direction. But I guess you, you need to be true to yourself and being true to yourself is staying with your roots, staying with what you know, you know, and possibly beefing it up a little bit or extending some of the, the choruses or, or the threads that's in it or some of the riffs, you know, to, to give it a wee bit more edge. But I guess if you change your direction, people would go, hmm, it's not this twist that I know. So I get I, I guess you were starting to rock in a hard place, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean that was that was two years. So that was before Jack, our drummer, joined us. So we, we were having these sort of discussions and then we we spoke to we spoke to a lot of different people in the industry and and, and some pe some people that we spoke to were people who knew us as a band, some people we spoke to to people who didn't know who we were as a band. Um and everyone said the same thing. Everyone, look, what you've got is great. It's mm -hmm. great in its, in its entirety. Just, just keep working at what you're good at. Don't try yeah. and yeah, yeah, don't yeah. try and the wheel. There's no point. Like, yeah. And we'd always we always say we want to. We, we'd rather be Marmite as everybody thought we were all right. People either love us or hate us, and that's yeah. fine by me. I, I I I guess that's right because you know you're never going to please everyone. You know and. No. You don't want to please everyone because if everyone said, "Yeah, the album is fantastic," I just want to keep listening to it. You would think, "Oh, maybe they're just brown nosing, or, or or maybe they'll just tell me what we want to hear." But if you get fans that go, f "Fans of the early stuff, but not of this new stuff," so, fans of some of the new stuff, but not all of it, it's fine because at least you're still reaching some new audience, you know, and who who are staying true to the old stuff and embracing the new stuff, you know. So I guess it's it's a right thing for you, Steve, you know, you and the boys, that you, you, you do what you keep doing, you know, and you can all you can only get stronger because I don't think there's a... You can only get better because you're as good as what you are, you know, and your songs are as good as what they are and being laid down is as good as they're going to get because it's as good as you're making it. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to go, I want to try harder because then you'll go, it's just not the same as cursed and corrected because you don't want to keep guessing yourself. You just want to, you know, stay true to yourself. That's you know, it. You know what I mean? We just want to, we, I mean, we, we set out goals. The albums, the album is written to, <clears throat> I suppose, guidelines in some ways. We, we have a way of working it. We have a way of writing and it works for us. And I, I think that's the beauty about the stuff that we do, right? It's, 
you can you can sing it everywhere. You can hear you by the time you get to the second chorus, you know what it is. Yeah. And that's the that's the thing. It, it's it's not just writing rock music, it's writing pop music. It's it's gotta have them catchy elements to it. And I think that's yeah. why I think that's why people do love coming to see us live because it's the energy and it's yeah, that's that, that's what it's about. And that's what well, music I can testify to that, Stevie. I've seen you, you know, in the cat house and in the hard rock cafe, and the crowd love it. You know, they just love the buzz. You know, they love the kind of in, infectious, catchy tunes that you play. You know, and they can go and have a good, a good night without, you know, without really like going. I, I need to really, you know, like zone into this band because the, 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 your, your pop tunes and your rocky uh, riffs are infectious, and people go, oh, yeah, and you can dip in. Oh, oh, this is one of my favourites, you know, because it's just it catches your attention. Do you know what I mean? And that's and that's what's good about it, you know. And that's what's uh, really good about the stuff that you guys write and write and uh, record and stuff. So, yeah. obviously, are you doing anything special for the launch? Are you streaming? Are you doing anything at all? Absolutely, <laughs> as much as we can possibly do. <clears throat> so we've got we've got a couple of uh, we've got a couple of real real great things that we've got planned and the first of which is we've teamed up with the people at Birmingham Streams um, to do our full show but live over the internet and it's going to be halfway between a live gig and a music video so we're going to, we're going to do it. stuff it's the album in its entirety but it's we brought out we brought all of our text back so it's our lighting tech and guitar text and stuff um, and we're just going to do it flat out but over the internet for free and that's going to be the week before the album comes out. Excellent. And the reason, we, yeah, that's going to be really good fun. The reason we did that was <clears throat> we weren't sure whether we could put on any shows that were just specifically album shows. I was like, oh well, other venues there at the moment to do that, and I didn't think they were. And then, literally last week, we got approached by the Chop House in Southport, uh, which is a venue we we played literally the week before we went into lockdown. And saying, look, we know you've got the album coming out. How would you fancy coming and doing a weekend here and doing Friday night and Saturday night? Um, obviously, sat down, all COVID secure and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But doing the album in its entirety, playing for you and just having a bit of a night of it. And so we've decided to do that as well. So I put the tickets on sale yesterday and I've got less than half of the tickets available now. So yeah. if we, um, the hope in the next couple of days, they'll be all gone. And, you never know, we might do a Sunday as well. <laughs> see how we yeah, get on. You, you, may, you may well have no option. They might just say, look, it's gone so <laughs> well. Let's just give it a twist of weekend, which is awesome. which would be good as well. Do right, it would, yeah. And enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, no no indication on touring and stuff. Um, you look, you're just having to put it off, everything off till next year and hope. Well, we're sort of trying to pick up as much as we go. Again, one thing about us is we're we're a working band. We we live and die by the sword, kind of thing. And we, I'm gonna say I'm going to I'm going to Greece next week to to try and get a few shows in, to bring a bit of cash back to sort of keep us going for a little bit longer. Um, and then we've got the odd gig here and there, but we've got the two with the choir boys in March, and now hopefully. Hopefully, that, they say that's Europe, and the rest of Europe seems to be doing a lot better than we are right now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So every, provide... time we, every time we talk to some bands in Europe, like yeah, 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 we, we're we're playing four nights a week, and like, where are you playing? And they're like, oh yeah, big halls, and, and you're thinking, can hell? But I guess the you know we're behind Europe in certain terms of COVID stuff and all that. So, and you know. You get people that say, yeah, I'm doing a gig. It was in a thousand capacity hall, but I've got 500 coming or 250. But it's better having 250 than nothing, you know. So they're doing it right, I think, over there. I completely agree. And you think of you think of percentages and stuff. I mean, even I've I've gone back and I'm doing gigs now that I was doing 10 years ago, and like it's not. Again, it's it's not ideal. It's not what you want to be doing right now. We obviously we want to be on two of two in the yeah. album. We want to be playing with playing with some some of our mates' bands and like some yeah, bigger bands. But the main thing is we, we're musicians and we this is our this is our craft. We we need to earn a living doing what we what we're doing what we do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot there's a lot of people at the moment which is like I think this is an opportunity for us all. Like it's yes, it's not ideal. 
absolutely not ideal, but this is forcing us to think of different ways of not just earning a living, but different ways to get our music out there to people who would have never heard it if it wasn't for the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing, isn't it? It's like I think you have to think outside the box of do I do a live stream? Do we do? Do we go to different parts of Europe to get our music out there and then stream it back? You know, do we release an album? in the middle of the pandemic so that when it eventually hopefully comes over people know the songs back to front and we can just hit a tour for two months or, or six weeks you know so th there is lots of different ways you've got to you know you've, you've really got to put yourself out there you know um i always say to people when, I, when i'm interviewing you know people like myself reviewers are very lucky that you know i review music 10 hours a day yeah seven days a week and i get to hear your stuff and various other sort of European bands and British bands and rock and jazz and soul and funk and, and I go, wow, that's magic. And you get to hear it two months before anybody else. Mm, but yeah. if you guys, as you see, have spent months in the studio, you know, putting it down and you go, I've got this album, but what am I going to do with it? You know, so for us, if you're very lucky that we get to hear it, you know, and as I say, I've listened to the album, listened to it twice, um, did a play through myself and then I sit with a glass of red and then I start writing my, my review, you know, and you get into the groove and stuff. And you kind of think when it comes out, people are going to be quite, you know, quite surprised with the stuff that's on the album. So, we, we, you know, we feel quite privileged that we get to do that, Stevie, before a lot of yeah. people know. So, um, as I say, I wish you all the success. I know you're pushed for time. Um, you've got your next one at half 11. Um, bye. <laughs> but it, it's been great to talk to you. Um, uh, as I say, last last year was the last time I saw you. Uh, you were in good form then, and uh, and I know that when you come back, uh, you'll be guys will be bigger, stronger, and better. You'll be on it, and uh, I'm hoping that you'll get to Scotland at some point again. Oh, we mate, we, as soon as we, as soon as we're allowed across the border, we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, get get some good old Scottish uh, um, hospitality in you, Stevie, as I say. Hey, right, mate. I'm dying to get back up the stone away just to bring some black pudding home. <laughs> yeah, you kind of used to be black pudding, mate. Right, but, mate. Listen, I wish you all the best. Pass my best on to the boys. Um, let us know when the uh, when the live stream's coming because what I'll do is I'll I'll probably review it for you and do a live stream review for you if that's all right. Sixth of November. No bother. I'll, I'll keep that in my diary. Um, but I wish you all the best for your future, Stevie. I wish the album every success when it comes out. Say hi to the guys. And this is Darren from Jace Media with Stevie Stoker from uh, Twister. Wishing you all the best, mate. Thank you very much, pal. Appreciate it. You take care of yourself. See Cheers, you again. Buddy. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate.